Welcome to Ferret and Ferretin with me, Simon Whitehead. In the next hour, we're going to look at the ferret's journey from birth all the way through till today, a day out ferreting in the field, the reason why we domesticate the polecat to become the ferret. We'll look at all the aspects of the welfare, the husbandry, how we keep it, how we feed it and how we handle it so we can ensure that's properly trained, fit and efficient for our day out. Here I've also got Maud, my little lurcher pup, she's 11 months old and like myself she doesn't know it all yet. She needs to gain every ounce of experience to make me, the dogs, the ferrets and the nets a more proficient and efficient working team trying to control the rabbit population. But before we can start ferreting we've got to go back to the summer when the ferrets were born, their journey begins. We can then look at the equipment, the nets, the spades, because there'll be plenty of digging, the ferret finders, the dogs, and then we'll look at the quarry, because without the quarry we wouldn't be ferreting. Not enough attention is paid towards the rabbit, the ultimate survivor. And in this next hour's video, we're going to look at the true aspects of ferreting to ensure we do have a future for ferreting. To start this introduction to ferrets and ferritin, we must first look at the ferret to understand how we keep it, how we handle it and how we feed it. And to do that we must look at the animal first. And out here we have the ferret. Here we have the ferret which is a domesticated pole cat. And like all domestications, it needs to serve a purpose. And the purpose for the domestication of the ferret was the rabbit. To help us, man, evict the little animals from their underground homes, the warrens. And as you can see, that was well suited for such a task. That's small, very flexible, and agile enough to work the deep, dark, confined spaces encountered in the rabbit warren. And here we have 